everybody, welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen, you're very welcome. And um, I make videos about the law, about the law, the substantive law, and about all the things around it. For example, how to get a job as a lawyer, how to qualify as a lawyer, how to be a good lawyer, how to mind yourself, all that stuff. Uh, it's a catch-all channel where things happen and I give my opinion and I'm quite an opinionated person so it's a great place for me to share my opinions but also um, do videos on topics that people suggest so that's basically what I do people suggest topics and I make a video on it because sometimes I'm out of touch with what people really want and uh, yeah so usually the suggestions come through on the Instagram page and I do them. So uh, one of my followers sent me a DM last week and she said to me, you started a new job during COVID. Would you have any tips for me? I'm starting a new job and I, I am very worried about the working from home. And actually I've had many clients in the last um, eight months in particular who've done online interviews for internships and traineeships and they've all got on fine um but there is you know there is some things to discuss around it it's not exactly straightforward um so i left my previous position in january and i started a new position um and that all happened remotely indeed i haven't even been physically to the office i've not met any of my colleagues physically nor have I met my boss uh, yet and I'm eight months into the job but yeah so that's what I wanted to discuss today and uh, like to be honest this applies to anyone starting any new uh, role. Uh, for me uh, I had to do some psychometric testing we'll say two months before the actual interview and sometimes that can happen with the big tech firms uh, I know, for example, it's become uh, very common, especially for traineeships, that before you even get called to interview, you have to pass a number of psychometric tests. So if you are asked to do psychometric testing, make sure you clear the decks and study. For example, for me, for the maths, I'm useless at percentages and reading bar charts and all of that and uh, I had to literally go away and study all of that for weeks. I was just like eating pizza, I wasn't even cooking, I was so nervous. Obviously when you're a lawyer like the English like grammar and like uh, reasoning, like deductive reasoning, that's not too much of a problem, well for me anyway, but the maths I found particularly difficult. And so uh, that was before I even did the interview um, and then I passed those and it, by the way if anybody needs um, sample psychometric tests just email me if you go to my lawhero.eu um, page and you go to uh, milk rounds or traineeship you'll see a section there called psychometric testing um, and there's some videos there there's three videos there and then if you email me directly which lots of people have done I share with you my Google Drive um, section of my the test that I had I downloaded because um, I paid 100 euro for them and um, it was worth it but if you come to me I'll give them to you for free Anyway, so that was that and now the topic is around starting a job. So I got the job, whatever, and usually when you start a new job, so you go, you get your laptop, um, you get your swipe, you are, you know, they explain to you where the kitchen is, they explain to you the hierarchy or the structure of the business. You meet your boss, you meet your co-workers and yeah, you basically go the first week, usually we'll say, well, at least the first three days is spent going around meeting everyone. And that's the same in a law firm and, um, you know, that you show face. Obviously working remotely, all of this has to be done via Teams or Zoom or whatever. So I found that, uh, I won't say stressful, I found it very draining because basically 
every single person so like head of department I had to meet obviously I'm in-house so it's different to in a law firm but I would imagine in a law firm it's exactly the same actually in a law firm you'd have less people to meet because you'd probably just be working within your own team uh, I had to explain myself to every person as if you know like that was the first time I was explaining myself so like you know and my boss, my poor boss had to listen and he had to introduce me to every single person the same way every time and I had to give the same spiel every time of who I was and what I would do. So that was quite draining, I have to say, and especially remotely, you can't really get a feel for, you know, how a person's reacting. You can up to a certain extent, but that, that bit was quite draining. So I would say for roughly the first month with IT issues, um, so getting used to the IT, um, getting used to the communication, the culture, the actual names of people, the first month is quite rocky. And um, yeah, I'll, I would imagine it's the same for everybody else. The things I did, so it's very, very important when you start a new job that you um, are very clear around expectations and who you are and how you operate. And it's like in any relationship, it's important to do that at the very, very start. So for example, with me, um, I made a really conscious effort to really communicate um, my the way I do things, you know, my organizational style, how I communicate. Um, so like, for example, with my colleagues, I'm very like informal. I'll, you know, sometimes I'll just use like one word like fabulous or no bother or whatever. Um, I don't go, yes, I will do this. Like, and I much prefer to pick up the phone and have a chat with somebody. So it, pe let people know what your style is. So like some people are quite introverted and if they need something, they'll write it out in an email very, very long. They'll just have like a stream of consciousness and that's their comfort zone. Some people like to have everything in writing. Um, for me, if there's something complicated, I would pick up the phone. And actually this kills two birds with the one stone because not only are you building a relationship with somebody, um, you're also you're also colouring the nuances around what it is you need. In email, you can't always catch everything. So that's what I would say, picking up the phone at least once to every single person just to have it, even a, a little bit of banter. Um, you know, if you find you have something in common, like you're from the same place or you're into the same sport, that galvanizes relationships. And even though you've never physically met the people, they do have a sense of a bond with you. And, you know, they will maybe call upon you more readily if they need advice, especially if you're a lawyer. So that was my strategy and I hope it's worked very well. I hope people have bonded with me in the last eight months, but anyway. Um, I think if I, if I think back to when I was a trainee and if I wasn't in the office, yes, it would be rather difficult. What I always say to trainees who are working remotely is ask yourself what you can do to make your, uh, solicitor's life easier. And again, for the trainees I had working for me remotely, um, we just scheduled maybe a chat once a week. If you're in a busier department, it might be once a day. And be very frank and honest <clears throat> about what the expectations are, as in when you're a trainee, ask, okay, what, what are the priorities? Like, if these are the kind of questions I would like my trainee to ask. What are the priorities this week? Um, what, like, why is that important? Um, is there anything I can help you with? That kind of a thing. What are the new projects coming up? Just show a bit of interest. Um, now, the presenteeism thing is not so prevalent around working from home because, you know, I don't actually see the trainee. But I have had instances where I've called a trainee, you know, left a voicemail and they haven't got back to me four or five hours. And, you know, that trainee is working for me. I don't think that's good enough. Um, I wouldn't do that to my boss unless there was an emergency, but I already would have told him that I'm going to be away for a few hours. That 
that kind of thing isn't good and leaves a very bad impression. Obviously, a good impression is if you see him as called, you ring back and say, what's wrong, can I help you? It's, it's not that you have to be present. It's just that you have to, like, if you are going to be away, tell them. See, I think people sometimes think, you know, that work is some kind of prison. But I actually think people make it complicated and make it a prison for themselves. You have to communicate the truth. Say, look, I'm going to be gone for a few hours. Uh, I'll do it later on. That's perfectly fine with me. I don't care when you do the work as long as you do it. And that's how most solicitors think. That's how most, like, the nine to five thing is a myth. We already know that. But there are performance metrics which are getting the job done and if you're stopping me getting the job done you're not going to get a very good review and that may impact you being kept on at the very end of your traineeship so think of it like that and that goes hand in hand with your attitude so if your attitude is one of cooperation then in that vein you're going to be a communic communicative person who's cooperating for the greater good of the department so yeah that would be my major tip and indeed that goes for anybody in any job communication is key in any relationship communication and cooperation is key working from home has its own downfalls benefits i think it really depends on the way you work are you motivated internally or do you need external motivation um I was talking to some people who explained to me that they need to be in an office because they need to be around other people who are also working in order to work. I personally am not like that. I don't need to be told to work because I'm a workaholic and um, I guess I have internal motivation, but I can understand, for example, if I was doing something I didn't like, like art or making pottery, if I was around other people, that certainly would make me do it. Um, if I was at home and told to do my own, I probably wouldn't do it. So obviously, if you don't really, if you're not really internally motivated by what you're doing, you're in the wrong job, but you probably need other people to push you on. That's okay. Um, I would say... The best thing to do is plan your day as best you can and then if you know for example you have an appointment tell the people you're working with it's very simple and as regards office politics I, I some people say office politics is gone because of covid i don't think it is office politics is still there it's just there's just not as much of it um as regards returning to the office i think I think the return to the office as a whole will never be the same way again. And I know most places are only looking at one or two days a week, which is, again, a, a dynamic that we're going to have to get used to. And um, I think in that regard, if you are in the office one or two days a week, because I know some trainees are actually in the office five days a week, so this doesn't apply to them. But if you are in the office, one or two days a week, that's your time to make the chit chat, build it, build the relationships. And I would say keep your kind of um, high concentrated work levels to when you're at home. Um, because you might as well, you, you might as well, like being in a job is not just about being productive. It's about maintaining relationships and creating bonds with your co-workers because I, I think sometimes people forget that like work work as a verb obviously is doing something but building relationships internally is just as valuable because when people know each other better they, they tend to share more information with each other and also they'll be less inclined to keep um, their doubts and fears around what they're doing to themselves which which creates a risk because if people are too siloed the the risk is basically uh splintered what you want to do is share risk but you can only really share risk when when people are open and frank with each other so yeah it it's it's i think as well as the leases and the rents 
I think that's another reason why businesses want people to come back. And the other reason is innovation. Um, when people come together, they are more innovative um, for the greater good of the company. When you're on your own, you're innovative for your own environment. You become a like an individual innovator, but when you when you are in the company or when you're in the company of others working as employees, you become innovative for the good of the company because you're competitive and you're thinking as a group. It's like a pack mentality. When I'm here on my own, this is my own pack and what I'm doing, yeah, I'm working for somebody, but it's more likely I'll be innovative for myself because biologically my environment is spurring that on and that that's what will benefit rather than my company. So yeah, um, that's my opinion on the whole thing. And please let me know if you agree or disagree. A lot of people have been asking me what's the best way to go about it. But yeah, I think the one word is communication. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.